How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Brood War ladder cast. We've got Promise here in the top left hand corner. Calm down in the bottom left and I've been casting a lot of ZVT lately so I thought I would go ahead and put together a ZVP video for this evening. I've got some games line, lined up. Don't know how many of them I'm going to put together. Um, I've actually got some hero replaced with Promise as well. So yeah, we might go through all of them. We might just go through these ones with Calm. We'll see how it goes. Um, and how long this video will end up being. If it's not too long, then I might do all the games that I have. If uh, it goes on for like several hours, then you know what? We'll just we'll just cut it off. I'm um, kind of spitballing it here. Usually I have a big plan going into each video, but. Today, I'm feeling a little bit off the cuff. So, got Promise over here in the top left. If you don't know who he is, up and coming Protoss player. He work, He's uh, playing for a clan. I almost said he works for, but he plays for Clan Join, which is a clan that I've never heard of before. But I look, tried to look him up, tried to find out any more information I could about him. His Liquipedia page is empty. Um, and I could only find. A few games that he played for the CNSL, the Caster Muse Narox Star League, um, as well as, you know, some clan league battles. So that's all we've got for information on him. Calm, on the other hand, of course, a very big streamer, has been around for quite some time. Uh, his popularity kind of outweighs his playing potential. He's like one of those guys like a, like a shuttle or like a, a larva who has a huge audience of Korean people. Just love watching him play. Um, but unlike larva, he hasn't won, you know, a, an ASL. Larva is kind of a, a unicorn in that uh, he is one of those few, very few people who went from being a super popular streamer to... Becoming an ASL champion, which is kind of insane in my book. That is uh, something wild. That is something totally different. But, you know, there's still time. Maybe he will become an ASL champion in the future. Maybe Calm can put it together. I don't expect him to, but um, if Larva did it, who knows? Who knows? Anything can happen. Brood War has a long and illustrious history. Lots of upsets, lots of stars rising and falling. Is Calm on the path? Perhaps he is. Perhaps Promise will be on that path here in the future. You just can't know. And look at this. Pro manages to get back inside the main. He's getting some great scouting information here. There's a three hatch uh, play from Calm. And he's going to go ahead and grab three minute 30 on layer. So he is on time here to get a Corsair out uh, before we see, or to, to get a, a Spire down and get some Scourge out before the Corsair, you know, gets too many kills. Overlord still heading towards the Protoss base. I think he did get some good information here as to when the cannon was finishing and, you know, when the gateway was coming up and stuff. So he knows there's no Zealot just yet, but as the third overlord pops you do want to build some lings because that's about the time when the first zealot pop, uh, comes out here and i think we actually delayed the zealot a little bit um not planning on putting any pressure i guess promise is he actually going to send this out oh he's going to set it around the outside so we'll probably see him put the second zealot in the wall here and just stay turtled up and try to sneak this Zealot all the way around. Although Calm is in a very nice spot with this Overlord. Will he catch sight of this? He goes up to the front with the Ling. He sees that there's nothing in the wall. So um, his strategy is completely uh, revealed. Because Promise did manage to you know, get in there and see uh, everything that was going on. He lost his probe, but it was uh, alive for long enough, I would say. Long enough to see that we had the lair and all that. And there, was, there wasn't really enough time to do a Hydralis bust anymore. So he's not worried about Hydra bust. He knows it's a lair. He's got this Zealot. 
Lone Zealot here hiding out in the corner. Is it gonna be spotted? Oh, I think it just saw it. Just barely saw it there in the Fog of War. Um, but he's already got four links over here. This is very smart play by Calm. You know, he saw the front. He knows, nah, I think he got another Zealot somewhere on the map. Definitely, probably, maybe you have one. So putting four links here. That will catch, and four links, of course, does wipe out a Zealot. No problem. Great control so far. Wow. Not even a single link going down here for Calm. Very nice stuff. Also, he hid his overlords really, really nicely here. He saw he sent the overlord all the way across the map, but he pulled it back with plenty of time, sending it down here towards the bottom right, obfuscating where those overlords are, and we've already flown through the entirety um, of the bases here of Calm, but Promise hasn't found anything. He's just going to find the Overlord now, but it's too late. Co uh, Scourge should be out. Okay, actually, maybe Scourge won't be in time. Maybe it just barely won't be in time. Yeah, it looks like he is going to be able to get that one Overlord anyway. Now here comes the Scourge. Going to spot another Overlord here. Does he stop to kill it? Certainly not. That would not be a good plan. Uh, Lynx are going to try and spot this other Corsair. He does see it, but I don't think he's got the angle. Yeah, it does not have the angle on that. He does have the angle on this one, however. Oh, he sees it. He sees it. Can he get it? Oh, got it. Oh, Scourge are so dumb. All right, he flew right through those Scourge, and they didn't even connect. That is unfortunate. Five meters on the way. Pretty standard mutilus count here. He does have three gas, though, finishing up. So there is a chance we might see Ogres or Gamer pop out. Flyer Carapace is on the way. Looks like these skirts are going to be wiped. Sometimes it's good to just hit move command and click a, a zealot with one of your scourge or two of your scourge just to keep tabs on where they might be. Unfortunately, that does cost him a little bit here. Calm. Missing these zealots moving out. So, this is how I die a lot. This is how I die a lot. Only four zealots, though. So, with the with the mutas here, it's not too bad. But just you just barely miss where the, the, uh, the zealots move out. And then... Uh, oops. There they are. They're right at your natural. And you should have had lings in, the, in position to block. But here we go. Great block here. Catching these zealots on the ramp. They're not taking the, the greatest uh, trade versus the Lings. I mean, they're still wrecking the Lings because of plus one, but the Mita is helping out to clear that. And I think that was a reasonable trade for those Lings. I mean, you're not going to get much better than that against Zealots with plus one. Um, so he got the most out of those Lings and he cleared the Zealots. Now it's just Promise sitting back here with not really much to do. He's just kind of going to chill right now. And as soon as you wipe out all the Zealots, seven drones in production. Exactly as it should be here for Calm. I'm flying into the main. He's actually going to let his Mitas get caught here. Oh my god. Vaporized. Holy crap. Okay. Calm not re quite ready for that ASL title yet, guys. I think that's what we're seeing right now. He's probably streaming, actually, while playing this game. Got caught off a, a little bit off guard there. You know, when you fly your mutas into the Protoss main, you should probably be paying attention to them. Um, or at least have them on a hotkey to pull back as soon as they start getting attacked. But Calm, not at all on top of that. He's back at home. Doing some macro things. Looks like he started his Hydralis production now. He's gone up to a staggering 52 drones. That's a pretty good defensive position here, and you can just see the Zealot count is dismal right now because of those earlier kills. Scourge flying through the middle of the map. Um, I don't think they're going to actually be able to connect with this, although the Carapace does help out quite a lot, as you can see. Carapace allowing one of those Scourge to connect on the Corsairs. Um, and kind of promise kind of has free reign right now. He can kind of fly around wherever he wants, but that free reign is going to be revoked in just a moment as the Hydras start to come out on the map. We've got overload speed. We've got Hydra range plus one is just about done. And like two, three groups of Hydras is when you can start to take back that map control. Ooh, a Templar move out. This is risky here by 
uh, promise, but it could pay dividends if he manages to make it all the way up to the natural. Oh, he's gonna see this. Yeah, that's scary. He's gotta make a, gotta bail out of here. Gonna come from behind. Oh my gosh. Dude, Promise getting a really good spot here. He's gonna force the Hydras to come down this ramp. Oh man, I'm gonna zoom out here for a second. Hydras coming from the front and behind. Big storms on these Hydras. This is exactly what Promise wanted here. Got one more storm in the bank. There it is, he casts it. That is all the storms he has, but he can run into the main now. He's going for some of the drones here at the natural. Hydras are gonna chase. Now let's run up into the main. Is the Spire up here? Yeah, he could go after that Spire too, by the way. Spire could absolutely get picked off here. Oh God, the Overlord's flying away right now. Spire about to be the target. Overlord's going down on mass here. I'll keep those in the tab. There's the Spire getting lower and lower. It does go down. This is starting to get a bit out of control for Calm, who's trying to spam Hydras right now, but he's getting caught by Zealots just rallying to and fro between the bases. Hydras here. Gonna finally be in high enough number, I think, to hold off this next Zealot wave. Do we have Templar with this, though? Not just yet. One Zergling gonna be able to deny the third base coming up. Flying in once again with the Corsairs. A big wave of Scourge was made here. That is not... Um, typical for a Zerg player to make a bunch of Scourge like that in the middle of a Zealot attack such as this. You really need Hydras at this point. So I'm surprised to see him do that right now. One Lurker Egg there with two HP that could easily be attacked and killed by the Zealots, but it looks like he's not paying attention. He doesn't see it. He will not burst up this ramp and Lurker pops out. Finally, it looks like he's gonna hold, but was the damage too much? We've lost quite a few drones, down to just 42 here, and the third base is now on the way. It's still a game, but it's certainly Promise favored at this point. He's done a lot of damage. Gonna get one more drone kill here, it looks like. Not quite. The Lurker's saving the day there, keeping those drones safe. And we're kind of on the back foot here. No other way to say it. Promise has the initiative, and he's going to use utilize that to move out on the map and kill some overlords, supply blocking brutally here, Calm, who is very low on units and is about to get lower. He cannot produce any drones right now to resaturate this base here at the natural, and Promise is making headway. He's advancing here on the position. We need to see uh, army. Oh, he actually shut down this third. I didn't see that. He shut down the third. Um, but can he stop this attack? The attack is coming in hard and fast here. There's a lot of Templar with a lot of storms. This might just be unstoppable. Hydra's gonna hit from the back. He needs to snipe the Templar first and foremost, eating a big storm there. More Hydras are gonna come out. This is just pure Dragoon though. Just pure Dragoon is not gonna quite cut it against Lurker Hydra. Great storms though. Might just be what turns the tides. Oh, great shot there picking off some of these. Templar, there's one left. Oh my god, all those Hydras die. Another round of Zealots is making its way up behind this. It's too bad he didn't save some of those Lurkers. Running them all into storms there means that he just doesn't have anything to fight with the Zealots aside from Hydra. Pure Hydra might not be the ticket here. Good micro though, so far from Calm picking off and targeting down a lot of these Dragoons. Now, Lings are going to join the fray as well. They do not have armor upgrades at all, so they're going to die very fast. One Templar walking into the natural here. Has it just been forgotten? I think it might have been another base down here in the bottom right. But Promise has vision on that. Oh my god, is this actually going to get some kills? Keep uh, an eye on that here in the tab. Looks like it's not. It does go down. Oh, it did get a storm. Oh man, it got a big storm there. Big, big storm. Kill like five, six, maybe drones. And Zealots are going to make their way down here to the bottom right. I think Calm just a little bit behind the eight ball now. He's just been slowed down too much. He did manage to deny this third for quite some time. So we're actually about to run out of minerals. But still the momentum here in Promise's favor. He's going to go after this hatchery. And it looks like he might just get it. Make just get the kill here with the plus one. And this many zealots, can he get the good stop position on the drones? It's pretty darn good, but it's not good enough. The hatchery falls. 
unfortunate stuff there for Calm, who will have to reestablish that base uh, very, very soon. Otherwise, he will end up going down to just like two bases mining. Well, I still got a lot here. Yeah, this is getting quite low, though. Kind of oversaturation over there at that base. A lot of Lings coming out now, but they really don't have much upgrades. These are the Lings at this point are so weak. It's crazy. He doesn't have any upgrades on them, not even crackling. Um, so they are just complete fodder. Uh, to the storms and zealots and dragoons, they get absolutely massacred. A DT heading out on the field might make its way down here as he knows there's no uh, overlord in that position. I just roaming with no overlord either. So, you know, they're not going to be able to catch this DT heading down here. This is a great move from Promise. Just send that in. Having one Corsair as well. Really, really nice. Just clear out overlords over and over again. Two Scourge are going to be sent though. That should actually kill this Corsair, which should be a bit of a win here for uh, Calm, who really needs a win right now. He very much needs a win. Um, big Lurker field over here. Not much Lurkers down here at the 6 o'clock, though. That could be a problem. So you'll catch the probe heading over there towards the top right. Big old army moving through the middle here. But he absolutely has to keep this base alive. He can't allow a counterattack to do anything about that. I, I think he's got enough here. I really do. Four cannons and this many zealots plus a Templar coming. He should be fine. I need to redirect this army somewhere else. I don't think there's the, the right choice, but maybe here. That could be doable. Oh my god, the Templar actually got the kill on the hatch. Oh, that hurts. That really does hurt. That kill on the hatch is so painful. The fourth base once again denied here for Calm. Um, it's still playable because we don't have a fourth from Protoss, but it is not feeling good right now. Lurker eggs on the ramp. He's trying to keep this Protoss army at bay. Buy himself some time here. He could flank this with a lot of Lurkers, but he just doesn't have the numbers uh, necessary right now, I don't think. The DT, the DT is still alive here in that base. That is crazy. All right, Lurker's going to spread out now. Zealous running on top of them. Um, getting some great value out of these Lurkers. Oh, my God. Great value. There's a big flank now coming up. Oh, those spines. Oh, my God. The Templar just absolutely destroyed here. And Hydra's going to come from both sides. This couldn't have gone better for Calm. Wait a second. Calm flipping this game on its head right now. How did he make that work? That is crazy to me. Lurkers and Hydras running up on a Protoss army is generally just not a recipe for success. But Calm makes it work right there and wipes that army clean. I guess the, the storms just weren't uh, timely enough there, maybe. Maybe he didn't throw them down as the... Uh, Lurkers were running up or something. Maybe he had the observer too far away from the army. I'll uh, take another look at that fight here at the end of this game. But that was wildly successful. Wildly successful for Calm, who's not even that good on upgrades. He's two upgrades behind the Protoss. And we're 2-2 two, two here. And the Hydras are just plus two. We don't even still don't have any Ling upgrades, I don't think, either. Not that that would have made a difference in that fight, but yeah, still no Ling upgrades at all. Not even a point in building Lings, honestly. From my perspective, it's almost useless to build Lings uh, when you have no upgrades. Looks like Prom is going to try to take the middle. Oh, wow. This is very interesting. Overlord's just patrolling up here in the top right, making sure no bases come down. I like it. But Prom is going to set up this base. That is wild. We very, very rarely ever see this base get, get taken here in the middle. But he actually needs to take upper right. He needs to take upper right. Like, we've got a lot of defenses going down here at the bottom right. Which means that we're not set up to do a full-on attack right now as Calm. Um, if, he, if he has a few more minutes and he gets this base set up, then he'll be able to, you know, formulate a giant army and defend those bases in the bottom right. But 
Right now, he's kind of just got the army, and it's on defense right now. So, this is the opportunity, I feel, for Promise to try and take top right. He's got to do it now, though. We can't mess around too much longer. Taking the middle, I mean, it's okay, but... No, I, I just, I don't think it's the way to go. We got to send this probe up here. Where's the probe? Send it up there. For the love of God. I wonder what happened to that DT. I'll have to picture and picture it if it got any more damage. If not, I'll just leave it. Probe finally makes its way up here into the top right. Okay, this is what I was waiting for. We needed this to get taken here. Um, if we want any hope in this game, as promised, because we're just not breaking in there. I don't care what you say, anybody out there. Th this is this is nasty right here. I'm um, gonna start to move out right now. Um, Snipes the Templar, not bad. Brodos kind of backing away with half the army. Half the army moving around this side, which I'm not a big fan of. I prefer to keep the whole army together here as Brodos if you can. We're actually losing a bunch of Archons, which is not a good sign. You never want to be throwing away Archons into a bunch of Zealots right now. And he finally does bring the army back around. But that was some weird movement there from Promise. Splitting up the army. I guess he didn't want a counterattack to come out of here and kill his his base in the center. But um, then don't, don't even engage over here, I feel like. Uh, he's going to engage half and half once again. I'm going to... Zoom out here so we can see both sides of this fight. Great storms going into this fight, but a lot of Templar are falling. Uh, Zealots are cleaning up a lot of this. The army is going to get cleared. But I feel like overall, Promise is spreading himself a little bit too thin. Really, there's so many different uh, routes that... Calm can take around this army to go and hit the base in the top right. Yeah, it's so hard. Like, you've got to hold this area, and you've got to hold this area at the same time here as promised. And his army's just not big enough. 138 supply is just a little bit too small. And you can see one army slips through. And now, Promise has to move back. He's got to clear this. It's dangerous. Let's see if he kills all these uh, lurkers and... Doesn't take too much damage. You should be able to bring the Dragoons up to the front with some storms. Uh, get rid of all these. Nice storms there. But this this has been prevented. Top right has been prevented. We're only mining in the middle. Which is not a recipe for success. Eventually, Calm's going to have this fully saturated. And he's going to be able to lurch out and take this base as well. It'll be up to Promise to, to utilize this main base to avenge, or the middle base to eventually take top right. He has to take top right eventually. No other choice about it. Army making its way into the middle here. Lurkers are getting in range of the probes, but Zealots are fighting them. Not a whole lot of Lurkers here, but the Hydras are high enough in number that you're not going to take a very good trade without a bunch of well-placed storms. Dragoon, pure Dragoon with just a few... Templar in here. One Archon. Do we have another Storm? Here they come. Storms are coming up now, but the Dragoon army has been completely reset. The supplies are getting closer and closer to each other, and the writing is on the wall right now for Promise. He's got to make a move. What will it be? Do we have... Yeah, we have Robo. Um, he's seeing down here that there's really nothing defending these areas. He's got some pretty good coverage with the Overlords. But really nothing down here. Absolutely nothing over here. Four Zealots could just run by down here and deal a lot of damage. He's just not kind of going for that here. Oh, that's a big stack of Hydras. Lurkers as well. Just getting absolutely carpet stormed here. Fantastic storms on all sides. Wow. I think that was about the best uh, that he could have possibly hoped for there against Calm. Calm. Not taking a great trade at all in any sense of the word. But in the end, because he kind of won the fight, barely. I guess he barely loses that. Just barely. But he killed a lot of the Templar, which is the big, big key here. Because, as you can see, depleted, depleted. 
This is only 2,000 gas remaining, and the middle, of course, does not have an extra gas. We are running very low on gas income right now, so replacing Templar in a very late game situation like this, usually you have so many Templar, you just don't even know what to do with them all. Um, you just start making Archons left and right, but in this case, he really can't be doing that. He cannot be doing that right here. He's got to be very, very careful with how he spends that precious, precious resource. And so he will be producing majority Zealots right now. Zealots, DT is making their way down to here to the bottom right. There's no Overlord in this position. He can just run right in and start hitting the Sunken and the uh, Hydras here. Go for Go. Go. Promise. Go. Promise. Please. Go. Okay. Well. Wait. What? What? Hold on. Wait. What? The hell? Wait a second. Promise wins that? Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Let's go back a little bit. Let's let's uh let's take a look at the the final moments of that game and just try to figure out what exactly was going through Calm's head here? How did he just tap out of that game, guys? I really don't understand. All right, the army is pretty big. He really doesn't have much left. Um, he's mined out there. He's got a small force over there. He knows that there's nothing for promise at these bases. What prompted him to tap out? Is it really that bad for calm? Got DTs here. The DTs are going to make their way down. Got more Hydras popping out. We've got no Lurkers at all. We're still on layer tech. We've got six Hydras here in the main. We've got another, what, eight Hydras here. Another six popping out. we got nine Hydras here. Another three there. Wow, this is um, this is kind of crazy. We didn't take any harassment down here. We've got 47 workers. And we're mining two full bases. And the Hydras head out. Tom sees the army. He just taps out. I guess this would have killed the natural. But I feel like the natural doesn't matter. Does it? Natural, the natural really doesn't matter at this point. All that matters is we've got these bases down here, and Promise hasn't taken another base. Wow, this is such a strange ending to this game, guys. I'm really kind of blown away right now. Um, I guess I can see why Calm decided to tap out when he saw this army, and he just really didn't have anything here at the natural, but I feel like... If you just kind of delay here, you know, put a lurker or two on this high ground, let this base go down, save this, kill the DTs here, and keep building hydras. As long as Promise doesn't take that, he's he's like out of money. He is he is so low on money. Look at this money right now. Less than a hundred on each of those patches. That is mind-blowing to me. Wow, what a close game here. Really, really tight. We we're very close in the supply to at the end there. I think it was like 100 to 125, something like that. I mean, it was almost 50 drones. Like 47 drones or something. Damn, this was a really close game. I can't believe that Protoss won using this as the fourth. He won against a Zerg on, what's, what's this, five bases? Five full mining bases with gas. I didn't take this gas, but you know what I'm talking about. This is a nine mineral base, right? Nine mineral expansion. Five nine mineral expansions, and we've only got, like, what's this? Six? 
Six mineral expansion here in the middle. A terrible mining. And Protoss managed to put it together. That is crazy, guys. <laughs> Even crazier that we had plus three on the way here. What are we doing taking plus three at this point in the game? Completely mined out. And we're going to go ahead and start plus three. The game is going to be decided way before that's even done. That's kind of hilarious. All right, guys. That was really, really weird. Let's go back and watch that fight where uh, Calm kind of turned things. All right. Here is that moment. <clears throat> We've got Calm coming in from behind. Usually, these are type of attacks, they really don't work well. We've got this many lurkers. That's a seven. Get a number of hydras. We've got almost nothing up here in the high ground. Let's see if he just lost vision of some of the lurkers or something. I'm not sure what exactly happened here. Let's just see as this comes in. Because usually the lurkers run up. You spam spells like storm here, storm there. Um, and the lurk the, the hydras just vaporize the the dragon or the lurkers take a bunch of damage and then the dragons just finish them off. One storm there, not too bad. But watch this. What do we have here? Oh, no storm on any of the Okay, we've got two storms left. Maybe he misclicked. You know, maybe he didn't click one the one of the high uh energy Templar. Something like that. He also where's the observer? Did I miss it? Oh, there it is, right there. So watch how these lurker shots connect. Boom! All of the Templars just disappear there and all of the lurkers uh, all the the lurker spines just stack up so nicely wow that's a lot of blue blood boys absolute massacre on the ramp and uh yeah Kong took a a fantastic position off of this fight like he easily got that base uh in the bottom right after this let's just see what happened to that that dt Eh, it looks like it just got picked off. I won't have to picture and picture that. Anyway, guys, we're going to go into game number two. Well, I'm still a little bit shell-shocked from that last game. Um, Calm not really living up to his name there. Definitely should have taken a couple of breaths when he thought that the game was over. Kind of reassess the situation. Uh, you know, maybe try to just delay things a little bit and, and think about... You know what kind of mining his opponent might have left i don't know if he would have won that game but i still felt like there was some play in there it's, it's a little bit funny to see a player with the name calm just kind of wig out and and leave uh, in a game that might have still had opportunities to win but uh it's, it's kind of like if there was a player named chill and after he lost this game, he broke his keyboard at the ASL or something like that. It just doesn't quite does, doesn't quite work out properly. Doesn't quite make sense, but we're going to have a rematch here. We've got Calm over in the top center. And a promise down here in the bottom right. Apocalypse, our three-player map. Probably the most balanced three-player map I've, I've seen, but does have some interesting features in this matchup, of course. We've got those high ground peninsula. Oh, that's so annoying. Oh, promise. He knows all the tricks. Hitting the drones over top of the mineral patches. Dude, it is so frustrating. Just leave me alone. Let me mine, for God's sake. Okay, finally gets a, a return there on that. Super, super annoying. How is that balanced, guys? How is it possible that the probe can shoot over the mineral patch? It's got a range of like one. What, one? One range? You're telling me that the mineral patch is only one hex? I guess? I don't know. That seems... That seems ridiculous. But it is a zealot start here. We've got, the, we've got promise coming in with the first zealot. He's already done some damage. When you see the probe just kind of going ham on your drones early on, uh, in general, that means that there's going to be some zealot pressure coming. Uh, that's from my experience as well as from you know, watching people play. Is like it, getting those two extra hits with the probe is just so helpful if you're going for the zealot. Yeah, if you're going for 
forge first, like, why bother? You're not going to come in there and, and get any kills, so... Um, if you can kill one drone, I mean, you're going to fight him over top of, you know, over where he's going to place the hatchery. Maybe you can get the kill. But if you're in the mineral line harassing the drones, it's mostly because you've got a zealot follow-up. And when the zealot gets there, you're hoping that the probe's done two hits so that when you bring the zealot in, you can do two hits and just finish it off. Anyway, just some small metagame analysis there. But uh, if you're not a Protoss player or a Zerg player, probably does not matter to you. I'm sure Terran's at home rolling their eyeballs like, Oh, you Zerg player, you have to... Oh, you gotta deal with the probe, huh? You gotta deal with the probe hitting you over the mineral patch. Huh. Imagine trying to build a building... And your SC, you've got no control over your SCV. Imagine that. And yes, I do understand. I do sympathize with you Terran players as well. That shit is super annoying. Ooh, clutch. Drone there. Gonna try and block. Oh! Oh! Oh. Damn, that probe just so sneaky. Really wanted to block that out because he didn't start the lair, but... Now the uh, probe's going to get in here. He sees no lair. It's a good bit of information there. We're going to see four hatch. Four hatch here out of calm. It is indeed. There's the fourth hatch. And the hydralis den. Of course, pulling back the overlords now. Really important that you get the overlords the heck on up out of there. You're probably going to lose this one no matter what. But maybe you can hide this one. Like you send it over here or something. Or maybe... Like over here and you might get lucky you might you know fly through the middle of the map uh, just searching for it but you can't you can't fly around everywhere you can't spend too much time searching for that so you gotta head straight over and and see what's going on with the hydras if they're being rallied out on mass and coming to to hit your front or what is he doing so he actually catches the overlord that's unfortunate so calm is gonna lose two overlords here and that's never the way you want it to go uh, when you're doing for Hatch Hydra. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's not the end of the world. But it's definitely not what you were looking for. Another Hatchery comes down. He might even go all the way up to six right off the bat. But on five, you can put on quite a bit of pressure here before the Templar get out. And doesn't look like he's going to do that here. I think he might throw down a six hatch. He's got the evolution chamber on the way. He's adding on more drones. Just a couple more hides just going to pop out here. And then full on drone production is what I expect to see. There's not a lot of zealots, so... Can't really get pressured right now. It's a good time to throw down a six hatch. And there it is. Gom has the layer on the way now. It is important you get that. Even with the four hatch hydra. You need to get Overlord speed pretty quickly because otherwise DTs can be super abusive. You can see nothing over here just yet. You can always pop on an Overlord though when the time is right. Seven minutes in. You're not going to have a DT out there just yet. But he's got one on the way so can't delay that forever. You have to build an Overlord over here eventually. Because um, the Pneumatized Carapace is just not going to come in in time to save that. Oh, promise. Promise, promise, promise. How can he be losing that Corsair right now? Well, he didn't lose it, but it was close. Seven Hydras on the way right now. Delaying with the Lings just for a little bit here. No sunken colonies whatsoever, though. Oh, kill that. Kill that. Oh, it's so close. Two HP. You gotta be kidding me. All right, run back through that little gap. He does keep the Hydras alive here. It's a delicate defense, I will say. Overlord, Overlord, <sighs> calm. What a noob maneuver here, man. You've got to build an Overlord at this base. This is very, very unfortunate. He's going to lose a lot of drones here, I think. Okay, he does pull back pretty quickly. Only loses one drone, but that's still a lot of lost mining time, guys. Um, and the drones are not even going to immediately go to the front of the mineral patches, which is super, super frustrating. 
Looks like he's going to lose a Hydra or two. You can't buy enough time for that Overlord to get over there. So he will just back off. Has to back off. And right into the arms of these Zealots. One Hydra goes down, but looks like he's going to push things back. Oh, did, did one Hydra fall? I think I heard a Zealot fall anyway, but maybe not a Hydra. Oh, this is a great scout right there. Fantastic. Shuttle is spotted. That is a huge, huge scout. Looks like he had his robo. Um, oh my god, is he just going to die? Wait, he only has two cannons. Uh, this is bad. Zealots are going to come from behind this, and they should be able to cleave it up, probably. He's only got one storm left, though. All right, he's not going to die. That's good. No, no, no dying here right now, promise. That would be very anticlimactic. I feel like this game has... Uh, gotten to a point where it could be pretty great if we keep this going. I do love 4 Hatch Hydra, and it's interesting to see it played out by a pro. Um, DT's going to be sent into the main. We had 14 drones just pop out, so he's not, like, ready for this. Uh, yeah, nothing back at home. Spire is on the way. That's going to be targeted. Meanwhile, fighting with the Zealots right now. The uh, Zealots are going to take advantage of... Calm, not paying attention, and just go for that. Oh, I just heard the shuttle go down. I think the shuttle just got picked off by these Hydras. DT with seven kills. Oh, you don't like to see that. No Zerg player likes to see that. But 52 drones still around, so you can see that he over-droned there by quite a hefty amount. Um, He didn't really produce any Hydras in the main at all. Yeah, he was really... Um, focus on just using these Hydras to bully back uh, Promise and then hoping to not get dropped um, But I, I you know he saw the shuttle Which should be a dead giveaway that the drop is coming um, We're gonna go in here get a couple more kills two two more kills, okay So still 49 drones here not bad not bad Zealots are going to make their way over to the front. This is super annoying. Get in the wall. Oh my god, he didn't get in the wall. If he blocks that, this gets almost no damage. But he didn't get in the wall. Uh, I think those Hydras were on an A click. Um, an attack move. So, Zealots get in the main. This is always a pain in the ass to deal with. Um, just sending one Zealot to fight the drones is usually the best case. Or two Zealots. But he actually just sends all the Zealots to fight the Hydras. Like, you usually take two Zealots and just run them into the mineral line. Pretty much even a B-rank Protoss does this. They just go, two Zealots, click a drone, and then just fight with the rest of the Zealots, and you'll lose, like, three or four drones at least um, if you don't pull your drones perfectly. That can be hard to do while everything else is going on. But in this case, he didn't do that. We've still got 67 drones here for Calm. Wow. That's a lot of drones. We actually need more hatches at this point. Jeez, so many drones, man. We're going for 70 here? That is wild. That is so many workers. Six lurkers on the way. It's a great time to build uh, lurkers is when you're droning up. Or a great time to bu build drones is when you're lurkering up. Um, I should say. And finally, we're going to get to this point in the matchup on this map. is where uh, Zerg starts to hold high grounds like this. And Protoss is holding his own high ground. So... There's no com containment that can happen right now on Protoss, but I don't think that Protoss can really break over here either. And we should have Lurkers coming down here. Maybe he'll, you know, sunken push out a little bit. Put some sunkens and spores right along here. I don't know if this is actually buildable. Actually, this is not buildable, if I remember. I think you can build sunkens and spores out to here and then put Lurkers there. That's a pretty good defensive position. But that's a lot of Dragoons. Maybe he's actually going to try and break this. That's so many Lurkers being made uh, at this moment. Go for the... Oh, 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 the Observer he gets them both. Okay, there's one more left. One more Observer. Can he actually break through here? He's going to try and mount the high ground with these uh, Dragoons. They're getting a lot of damage. A lot of Hydras are coming up as well. And the Lurkers pushing forward here. Great spreading there by Calm. You can see he's got some... Uh, Excellent mechanics when it comes to spreading those lurkers. Good solid play from him. But he's going to have to react to this movement. Um, 
Promise might try to come around through here. Oh, he's actually going to hit the bottom side of this. See if there's a weak spot down at this part of the ridge. Big storm there on a lot of these Hydras. Dude, Calm just kind of letting the Hydras walk into that. Losing a lot of them. That's a great trade. But coming up from behind, can he get a bunch of storm kills here? Can he kill a few more Templar? That's some great kills there. And we don't have too many Zealots with this, so... He could continue here. Only two Templar remain when all is said and done. Base going up, though, over here for Promise. Now, Calm has a big decision to make. Does he try to funnel through this area to kill this? Does he try to take this high ground away? Or will he attempt to take this so that he can grab the bases in the bottom left? Those are his options here. He could also feign moving this direction and then send lurkers around to take this but we've got to make a move here pretty soon once this is established with templar and cannons a lot of them then it won't be necessary for promise to move this army like if he just if he just keeps this army here it's really hard to take that bottom um plateau this one here so it's really important that we make Promise move if we want to take that. But I don't know if he can make Promise move anymore. Promise might just sit here. If he's sitting right there, he's, he's confident in his defense up here, which he, he appears to be. I think he's got enough up there. Maybe a few more cannons? Yeah. He wants to really shut that down. But if Promise holds this... You know, stays near the middle and prevents stuff from getting down here. Look, this is exactly what Calm wanted to do. But he's not taking my advice here. He's not forced Promise to move. Um, his army is just kind of cock blocking right now. He's stopping him from moving forward. But with the army down here, Calm has an opportunity to take this plateau. Which he's going to do right now. Um... Promise he's going to cede that territory. But can he break center left? That's a lot of Sunkins that are coming up. They're not done yet. And he's not actually started them into Sunkins. He's going to go instead for this base over here. I'll picture and picture this now. Um, Calm is breaking through a lot of this. He's actually going to kill. It looks like all the cannons. He's just got to control a little bit better. Oh, the storms. The Templar come up from that fourth base. And they get totally wiped out. Tom is going to clear this, it looks like. Um, all the probes going to go down as well. Promise not pulling them until the last second. And the lurkers are already in position. So that base falls. And man, this base hangs on. That is wild. Promise on the ropes now. Running away with a few Templar, but being tracked down here by the monstrous macro of Calm. I'm going to run him into the ground, it looks like. Ooh, losing the observers, too. And if he just uproots and takes the high ground here, I think that we will see a calm victory. If he leaves a bunch of his units up here, I don't think that's the right play. Uh, we'll see, though. We'll see if calm can still put it together. There we go. Okay, he's going to move everything. Might have been a little bit late, but he's going to finally get it over here. Lurkers, got a burrow. There we go. Gonna get those underground. They don't have a lot of HP, but they're gonna soak a little bit of hits and maybe uh, uh, finish off some of those zealots. Hydra's making their way up here. Looks like Calm will be broken. He actually can't hold this plateau. Wow, so a bit of a reset here. Um, Now Calm can definitely take the bottom left. It's really important for Promise to clear out this lurker and then hold his plateau and reestablish four bases. So uh, since he's in the mind of doing that, oh God, these zealots are gonna get picked off for free. They actually wanted to head down to the bottom left. Great block there. Oh, I love it. Dude, that was some good blocking. Plus one, plus one is done now. I just have plus two. Um, Hydra's, I mean, we're gonna go set up some lurkers down here in the bottom left. This is great, great stuff. This is fantastic. Calm just going to lurk her up once again. He's got such good vision control this game. Look at how much vision he has on this map. Check out the mini map right now, guys. He sees everything here. 
Army's gonna meet in the middle once again. Can he snipe a observer? There's only one. Oh my god, so many lurkers are being made right there. Dude, two storms could actually end this game right now if he was just able to get on top of that. Looks like he won't. The lurkers are really stuck on top of each other. Just a quick split here from Calm. There we go. Not panicking this time. Being very, very nice and calm. His namesake here. Throwing those lurkers on the plateau, spreading them out. Sometimes you'll see players with all the lurkers stacked up like that. At the moment that they pop out, they'll panic and uh, burrow them. And then the storms come through and absolutely annihilate everything. Absolute nightmare as a Zerg player. But here we go. Calm has the bottom left. Promise has his four bases reestablished. He wanted to try and mitigate this. He didn't want to allow this to happen. But now he's kind of he's kind of stuck here. He he, he can't dislodge Calm at this point. Calm has this base. He's got the Nidus. Um, he's about to have Plague and uh, Defilers are on the way. Uh, it's going to be a long game no matter what happens. So Promise doing the right thing. He's going to try and take bottom right. He needs to try and get more bases established um, because these won't last forever. And right now is a great time to do it because Calm is busy setting things up in the bottom left. Uh, he's not ready to get aggressive just yet. He wants to wait for that plague. So this is the correct time to start taking these bases down here. Calm. More and more Lings and Hydras coming out here and a quick cheeky Defiler attack over towards the top right. Gonna turn that around. After it being spotted. Trading out like 10 Hydras for one Templar. It's a little bit rough, but at this point in the game, it's uh, almost acceptable as the Zerg player. Not quite, but it's almost. It's almost there. Trade like five Hydras for a Templar. It's not that bad. It's not, it's not terrible. First Plague of the game. Are we gonna get it? There it is. Plague on all the Zealots. Really nicely done. Zealots are going to split. Sometimes you just want to throw the Zealots in, actually, um, once they've been plagued. Because running away with them, they're going to lose all their health and they're just going to be so weak. So sometimes it's better just to fight then and there right as the plague happens. But small army made its way down here to the bottom right. I just don't think this will break through, but you never know. Maybe you can skirmish down here and get some good trades. Small army there. But yeah, everything's going to come through the Nidus now, and there's no way. He's actually might get caught uh, trying to run home at, uh, in the end here. That could be bad. Oh, actually, Link's being sent down to the bottom right. Maybe he snipes that base. These are a plus one attack. Plus two. Yeah, this base is gone. Oh my goodness, that's going to die so fast. Yeah, there it goes, boys. Fear the crackling. Absolutely insane. Um, good on Calm, though. He gets down there and clears that base. Not the end of the world here for Promise, but he really does need another base. I mean, we're not empty on minerals, but it's starting to look grim. We do need a fifth. Calm just slowly, assuredly taking more bases here. Gonna move to take this one now. Not really anywhere that Promise can break through, really. Uh, is it time to start throwing out speed shuttles everywhere? I feel like the time has been nigh for quite some time. Like, when, when are we going to start doing that? When are we going to start harassing? The Spire has been dead for so long. I mean, he killed the Spire. Usually when Protoss players see the Spire die, it's like a, a light switch goes on in their brain. You know, the light bulb goes off in their head. They're like, oh, yeah. Shuttles are really good now. They just immediately start sending out shuttles to, to storm everything. Because you just don't have Scourge to deal with it. But um, he hasn't done that. Which, definitely a missed opportunity. But the Spire is here now. Great Plague. The Spire is here. And yeah, now we can start to build Scourge. Well, not now, but in a few moments we can start to build Scourge. And... <laughs> Look at that lurker. Look at that lurker field. 
That's, that's like, uh, more full of blackheads than my, uh, high school class photo. Jesus. So many blackheads. Lurkers are going to come up here. Um, you don't want to throw away too many of these. But if he can get into position on this high ground and cut off the base down here in the bottom right, then he can just funnel Lings through until eventually this dies. Uh, let's see how he does here. Running the Lurkers right in. I'm going to bro them on top of everything. Where are the Observers? There the, there's the Observer. All right. I'm going to get in there. Now, promise you really should attack. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the best choice. Um, he's almost certainly going to lose this base. But, if you get this attack going down here, you can kill two bases, as promised. Oh! No! Everything just explodes there. That is rough for promise. Um, Storm's going to come down on a lot of this, uh... Lurker army that's coming to try to assist. That is some of the best trading I've ever seen from a Protoss player. Oh my god. That is so many Lurkers. He's actually going to start to break in here, but Promise is running out. I don't have much left. I've kind of reset the game right now. The game stayed. Army is completely gone. Can we hold the counterattack? It's like uh, Lings are going to get over here. Storm's really, really good. Storm's a good unit. Lurker's making their way up as well. He has to hold this base. Uh, Defiler, a little bit late, but it's okay. Does make it into position, gets the plague. And there's not too many Lurkers left now. Oh my god, I say that, but Jesus, there's a lot of Lurkers left. Calm. He's not going to make this one. He's not going to let this one get close here. That is so many lurkers. Holy crap. Dude, where did this army come from? He lost so many lurkers trying to stop bottom left from getting taken. And dude, he's just got so many more in the pocket. That is craziness. Nice plague there. Dealing some more damage. Uh, as all these probes go down, Calm is going to take another base down here. Shuttle making its way around the map. He's going to look for storms on this base. There's only, really only this base and then this base that are mining right now for Calm. So if he loses all his drones at this base, that could be really serious. Let's see how it goes. Oh my god. Wow. That's a lot of drones. Holy crap. We're still producing here as promised, but it's it's looking grim. We don't have much left. Storm. Oh, damn. That's a lot of kills. We're down to just 30, 29 workers. Wow, 29 to 29. That is shocking. But the army is just way too big. Calm coming across with... Oh, I don't even know what to call that. That is... <laughs> That is legions of units right now. Oh my goodness. And just almost nothing left here for Promise. This is sick. Promise is gonna get completely surrounded and pushed back. This is like the defensive ire right here. Nowhere left to run. The DTs are gonna come out and there's no Overlord here, but the plague on everything to get rid of the DTs, just not caring. Whether it's friend or foe, he plagues his own units just to get rid of those. And calls... Uh, <laughs> Promise calls a GG. Dude, what a game. That was really, really fun. I enjoyed that a lot, guys. That was that was sick. I am shocked at how much macro Calm was able to pull out. That's kind of his MO. Is that maybe he's not an ASL of a player, but sometimes he can macro like an absolute god. He has been in ASL a few times. Should mention that. Um, when I say an ASL level player, I was thinking like, you know, uh, you know, round of four, round of two, or semifinals, finals, that type of thing. But uh he has made it into the group stages quite a few times. Anyway, pulling out some godlike macro, redeeming himself in this little series here. That was some beautiful, beautiful play out of him. Really did enjoy this. Um, I think I'm gonna save 
Now, you know what? We're going to do these hero games as well. We'll throw this all together as a package. We're going to go into hero versus promise, guys. That's coming up right after this. Hey, guys. Neon Marble Rust is back with a new visual update and gameplay changes. If you haven't seen it before, this is a brand new RTS made by fans of Brood War and this channel. They are looking to recreate the old school RTS feel with an interesting twist. You will manage a complicated economy with many different resources using automation and upgrades as you bring together a strategy to overwhelm your opponent. The game is completely free to play and my link to their stream page is in the description of the video. Thank you to everyone who supports me by downloading the game. And thank you to Neon Marble Rust for helping to keep the dream alive. Now back to the video. Okay, here we go with Promise versus Hero. Don't make me regret this promise. Give us some good games here, please. Um, I don't know if he's going to be able to top, or Hero's going to be able to top that performance from Calm last game, though. Um, he's certainly capable of it, though. Don't get me wrong. Hero. Absolute macro god himself. Spawning here in the top right-hand corner. Promise in the bottom left. Uh, pretty good performance out of Promise, I gotta say. For a player who I don't think he's made it into the group stages of ASL. I don't think he's you know, particularly well known. Certainly haven't heard too, too much about him. Um, he's performing very, very well. Pulling out some good, good stuff here. Some entertaining games, that's for sure. Especially that last one. That was a lot of fun. Um, definitely the game on Retro, he looked a lot stronger, but... I think he made some good moves. Now the the overall idea is great. I think maybe lacking a bit in terms of drop play though. He did pull out the drop ship that last game, but as soon as that shuttle, that first shuttle went down, he kind of abandoned the idea, which I mean, when your first shuttle kills the the spire, that is kind of a green light, like I was talking about last game. It's a green light to do more drop play because you just know that your opponent's not gonna have the tools to deal with it. Now a nine, I'm oh, sorry, not a nine, um, overpool here from a hero. Standard, typical stuff here. Probe's gonna get in, he sees everything. Just wants to see what pops out of these eggs. It's only gonna be four lings, or two lings, excuse me. So, can definitely pressure with this first sell it. Definitely, definitely he can pressure. He's gonna send that across the map. And a lot of Protoss players will just try to kill the lings. These first couple of lings um, with that zealot. But here, it looks like he's going to try and block this as long as possible. And he does get the block here with the Zealot coming in. You're not going to be able to take that base. Now, this is a really good play here for Promise. He delayed that just barely long enough. And this is a mistake, I guess, by Hero. You know, he sent one Ling out. He does get it across the map and gets it in. He gets it in the main. And tries to kill a probe. Can he get one? Oh, not quite. But, since he didn't have that second ling with the... Since he didn't have the second ling here, he wasn't able to chase down the probe fast enough to get the drone into position to get the uh, hatchery down. So his hatchery has been delayed by quite a bit. Two zealots are going to start hitting this hatch. Uh, Hero's just going to sack this, guys. He's building only lings, and he's going straight across the map. We've got a cannon on the way, but it's not even close to being done. He needs to pull all his probes to the uh, entrance now. He needs them now, 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 now. Oh, not quite fast enough. He needed them right on in the entrance. 
the moment that these Zerglings arrive, but it looks, I think, like Hero can get in here and stop this cannon. Three Zelts are gonna come into the natural. So, okay, there's quite a few probes that went down, but I don't know if this is worth it. Hero actually kind of in a pickle here. It's really going back and forth quite rapidly. The third base went down. He gets a great surround here. Dep really depends on how he clears this. Okay, the Zealots are going to get behind the Mineral Patches completely now. Makes it really hard to clear it efficiently. He needs to actually split these and go around. Send a second group around. Okay, he is going to send that around now. He should be able to clear this not uh, without too much more trouble. He went for speed, so you can tell that he really wanted to put the pressure on here. And he did put quite a lot of pressure on Promise, but Promise handling the pressure like a champion. He killed that base, he pulled the probes, he stopped the Ling attack, he kept the cannon alive. He lost quite a few, so you can see his probe count not looking great. Really not looking good at all. But as a Zerg player, I tell you right now, you do not feel good in a situation like this. It is really, really rough. We, uh, The main problem is we never went for Lair. We went for early Ling speed, and we lost a lot of um, production drones. Like We've been building only Lings for a long time now. We've got a big group of Lings out here. And the, the Corsair hasn't really been slowing down too much. It's been slowing down a bit, but not a whole lot. So, yeah, this is this is not feeling good for me personally. I feel like really, really messed up at, at this point in the game. But as a consummate professional here, Hero should be able to maneuver his way into a reasonable position. I just don't know how good that position is going to be because me personally, I will be falling apart at this point. Um, my, my whole build's been completely thrown off. We've lost drones. We lost hatches in the early game. We, uh, you know, it did a Ling attack that didn't kill the cannon. It didn't, uh, you know, get into the main and, you know, slow down the gas or anything. It just killed a bunch of probes. That's it. It's feeling pretty darn wacky right now. And I, I'll say that is not my strong suit playing in kind of wacky situations. Now... We're going to have to throw down an Overlord here. We have Hydralis going to be start incrementing out pretty soon. But I'm a bit afraid for Hero right now because he actually got supply blocked at a very inconvenient time. He doesn't have any Hydras. I guess he got one. He got one Hydra. Got one Hydra. Can he defend all the Overlords here? I think he might be able to as long as he starts attacking right away. Yeah, he's going to get one more Overlord to pop. Okay. Building no Overlords here in the main. That's very good. You want to build all your Overlords right here. And then everything else, Drones and Hydras. Six more Hydras are about to pop out here. He's going to fly in with the Corsair. He does decide to back away, though. More Hydras are popping out. And Zealots are going to start to pressure here. Hero. Putting up a good fight right now, I'll say. Giving us a good game to watch here. This is uh, this is what I like to see, actually, because Promise is not supposed to win this game, but Promise is in a pretty decent spot. So we'll see if he can pull it out from a slight advantage. Still would be a very big upset if Hero was able to, or if Promise was able to take down Hero here. We've got more gateways coming up now. Great surrounding. This is this is some excellent, excellent stuff out of Hero. Did you just see he killed two zealots there by just fighting with these like eight links? These are two these are plus one zealots, right? These things are supposed to massacre links. But Hero is just really on top of his control, constantly looking for opportunities to snipe zealots, and I guess that uh Promise not paying attention fully to all the positions he needs to be. Um, and losing those zealots is going to hurt him here. A lot of Hydras making their way up to the front. We've got three cannons and two Templar. Storm not quite done. 
But maybe, just maybe get the forge. I don't think he can kill right now, but he could get the forge. He does get the forge. Can he get the gateway as well? The gateway would be a big pickup. Slowing down the overall um, production here of Promise. And I gotta say, Hero impressing the hell out of me right now with what he's able to what he's able to do. And oh, he just turns around and walks away. I love it. Dude, Hero is godlike. Godlike, man. That is fantastic, fantastic play. He realized that that storm was just a, just a tad bit late. You probably don't have storm yet, do you? Let me just check. Let me just come kill your forge. Oh, you, you still don't have storm? Okay, let me just let me just quickly kill that gateway. Um, and yeah, you probably have storm now. I'm out. Just takes off. No, uh, you know, unnecessary losses there. He did kind of throw away his links, but no big deal. Links are no longer useful. Um, they're just going to be a hindrance here, just taking up supply, so get rid of them. DT should be coming out here soon. I don't think we've seen one yet. Um, so maybe we're not going to go for the DT play here. But a fourth base on the way for Hero now. Confidence just spilling out of this man right now. Absolute confidence. Just going to take that fourth base. Get into his lurker play. He doesn't have a third gas right now, but he will have that soon. And once he's got the third gas, you can bet he can afford a few lurkers. So he is getting prepared for that situation. We should see a wave of drones here soon. But for now, continuing to produce Hydra. Getting prepared for this attack. Might be able to kill off these Corsairs. Meanwhile, big fight here in the middle. That is way too many Hydras. Dude, he is taking a bad fight here. Promise. Promise, are you cracking? Are you cracking under the pressure, Promise? How did you not know that that was a bad fight? GG. Whoa. Promise just taps out after taking that bad fight. Really? Yo, you got to be feeling really, like, mentally broken here as Promise after that game. I really feel like Hero was in a bad spot. Let's go back a little bit and just take another look at this. I want to see how many probes were killed. Is it even further back right here? I think so. No. Okay, there we go. Let's just see how many probes were killed. We're at 19 probes. Now let's see how many die. One. Two. Three, four, great targeting, five, not even going to go for the cannon, six, and we out. Excellently done there. That was fantastic. Really, really fantastic. The Zealots did a great job too, delaying. But six probes, I guess, is that the right number here to slow down promise just enough even with the lost like i i guess the calculation here right you go across the map you just uh you know that you're not gonna be able to save the hatchery or you're gonna barely save it and then more zealots will trickle in it'll be super annoying um hero instead sacking the hatch building all lings he goes across the map doesn't try to win just try to knock off some of the economy here for promise and i guess that's enough i i guess that's what he was looking for it all it feels like you would have to do more uh by build you know when you build all these lings you build all these lings and you don't get to kill here Six probes, it just doesn't feel like enough to me, but I guess it is. Hero definitely making the, the math calculations there. Rain Man over here. You can see the formulas just flying past his eyes. Realizes exactly what he needs to do. And um, One more time, let's just watch this move out here. Because this was so impressive to me. Uh, what Hero was able to do with these links. Let's, let's just stay trained on the lings here 
see when this move out finally does come. Okay. I was tracking the lings here. He's doing everything back at home at the same time, by the way. He's building hydras. He's doing this layer stuff. He manages to catch on to this zealot for a second. Oh, let's just get in between that. Oh, there it is. He gets the zealot. Very well done. It's kind of irritating, actually. Um, training the, uh, the, the camera here onto the lings. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, yeah, okay, just looking for another lane. Just looking for another pickoff. Just anything I can get. Oh my god. You right clicked. You right clicked, didn't you, bro? You right clicked with the zealot. You wanted it to go home, but no, he is trapped. Two lings? Or two zealots get picked off by lings at this point in the game? I think this that actually broke promise more than anything, man. I think that actually broke promise more than anything. He was feel he was feeling pretty bad after his first zealot. Um, well, a second zealot move out here. The first zealot move out with plus one goes horribly wrong. He loses two zealots right off the bat. And then Hero just walks up and takes his forge and gateway and says, Give me that. It's mine now. Right before Storm is done as well. Left Promise feeling really, really bad about the position that he was in. And maybe he kind of second-guessed himself. Thinking, I guess I didn't do that much damage, you know? I guess I guess I didn't slow Hero down enough. I'm in a... Maybe I'm in a bad position. There's no way I can take on Hero from a bad spot. And he just taps out. That's a, that's a confidence hit, man. That is a serious confidence hit. When you get kind of bullied by... Um your opponent when things are actually looking pretty good for you in the early game i know it doesn't look great right now if you look at the the supplies here and some of you guys are probably going to type in the comments right now look at the supply man it was looking so good well, well, hero definitely winning in this position just 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 hold on for a second guys look look this the supply we've got 37 workers and everything else is hydras okay that is it that's all we've got Look at all the gateways finishing right now. You see this? See this? The production has not truly begun yet for, for Promise. So he's going to drop down one more gateway here. And then he's going to start firing off. Oh, no. He's actually got eight right now. So he doesn't even need one more. He's got eight. And as soon as he hits his first macro round, he will be ahead in supply. For sure. We're making drones right now for Hero. It's not like he's beefing up his army. Oh, just watch. First macro round comes out. That's 14 supply. And we're going to hit another one here in a moment. The macro is coming into form. We're still in an okay spot. But promise he is mentally defeated here already. Mentally defeated, guys. Maybe a, um, you know what I, I think actually happened here is that one of his hotkeys just did not bind. Like the hotkey for all of these must not have bound here because I feel like this attack when he fought with the zealots, I feel like he was expecting the Templar to arrive. And then as all the zealots started to die and he was realizing that the Templar weren't there, um, he was like, okay, well. There's no way I win after this bad fight. So you can see. 10 supply advantage, but that's going to grow as soon as he starts this next round. You can see we've got nothing in production tab right now. So going to hit this next macro round. And here we go. Where are the High Templar? Are they not bound? We have enough space in this hotkey for another, like, 2 3 High Templar. And they're not coming? And they are just not coming. Yeah, this is, this is, uh, I think a case of misbound, uh, hotkeys here. Because we really should have had, if we're gonna fight this number of Hydras, excuse me, with our Zealots, you gotta have the Templar to follow this up with some Storms. But he just didn't have it there. And I think that Promise just realized, oops. None of my Templar are with my army, and boom, he just taps out. We're going to jump into one more game here, Hero versus Promise. 
final game is coming right up. I don't know about you guys, but after watching a hero win that last game, I am inspired as a Zerg player. I was saying it before, but when you lose your third hatch that early on and you don't kill with lings, like when I, I decide, sometimes, sometimes that happens to me, right guys? I don't build, you know, four lings right off the bat. Maybe I just build two. I see that it's a gateway and then I'm like, okay, well, he's just sending, uh, you know, his zealots at my third hatch. Um, you know, maybe my third hatch is delayed. Uh, and then, you know, the third hatch starts to go down. He commits like three zealots to that. And I say, okay, well, we're going to play that game. I'm just going to ling all in. Let's get ling speed. Let's make, you know, 10 lings and just go try to kill. Uh, and if I go across the map and I do not get the kill on the cannon, at least, um, if not that, like a, just a buttload of probes and the follow-up can come and just kind of finish them off. I generally tend to just quit that game because I just, I feel like I'm so far behind, but you're really proving to me that no, you, you can just kill, just target probes. If you just target probes, you know, kill like six probes, five probes, something like that, seven probes, however many probes. Um, I don't know what the magic number is, but maybe it's six. Uh, a hero seems to think so. He showed me that, yeah, you can absolutely take that fight. No problem. Not a big deal at all. Um, you can take that trade. Trade your hatchery for six probes. And uh, take that all the way home, I guess. Six probes. Uh, that's, that's a lot of money. Six probes. That's uh, That's 300 minerals, right? So, I mean, it's even with the, the, the no amount of uh, minerals you lost from losing your hatch, unless he canceled. I'm not even sure if he canceled or not. I don't think he did. I think it finished. So he lost 300, plus 50, though, for the drone. So, um, mineral-wise, it's not exactly worth it. But, yeah. It's still, it doesn't feel worth it. Even in my head, like, I'm doing the calculation right now, guys. In my head, because this game is playing out pretty similar to the last one he did build a bunch of lings here in the in that early game though he did build five, five lings four lings four lings um no not six four so he's gonna pull out a few more but i'm just in my head guys like it just doesn't quite make sense six probes for a hatchery um you lose the drone and you built all those lings uh, I guess he killed the, the zealots, but they got a good trade. I just, I, the math just doesn't really work in my head properly. Um, it feels still bad for hero, but I guess as you just saw, it is not that bad. You can definitely pull out of it. Um, uh, just, just a little bit, uh, a little bit shocked and a little bit impressed. Um, oh my God, is he going to get by? No, not quite into this game now. Sorry guys, sorry for talking too long about that last game, but we're gonna get into this one. Got the Zealots. Probably gonna try and tuck themselves behind some minerals. Can they make it there though? It's a little bit, uh, a little bit far away from, from there now, but um, you're making the mistake that I often make as well, not uh, attacking with all the links at the same time, but in this case, he is gonna be able to clear things out eventually. Uh, the best thing to do is usually, you know, if you've got links coming out and you've got links coming from behind, uh, you hit them both at the same time. Here, he kind of had the first links fighting here and then brought the flank up um, after the, the first group of links was kind of dead. So, not the greatest way to take on a, a fight with the Zealots, but at least it didn't allow them to get behind the mineral patches, which uh, in that case, they're just going to take a great trade no matter what. Um, good targeting here. Very good targeting. Will kill one of these zealots before the rest of the links have to retreat. A few more links on the way here. He's building the absolute bare minimum. The bare minimum of links here to get rid of these zealots. Unfortunately, this zealot will make its way behind the mineral patches. Pretty much no doubt about it. We've got lair on the way. Uh, link speed coming as well. Some more links are going to come out here, but Mostly drones should be on the way from this position. He does see that the wall is set back at home, but I'm surprised he built six more lings. Um, but he did. He did go for six more lings. A spire does start. 
But a lot of floating larva right now. But he will get into that drone production. Had to get that uh, spire going. So being very careful to make sure that that spire is on time here. Finally. Finally killing that zealot. Very annoying zealot there. Has some links here. Just checking. Seeing what he can see at the front. Sending the overlord back. Does not want to get that uh, picked up by the Corsair. Of course, this one will probably, no doubt, go down. Is what it is. Spire not going to finish that quickly. It cuts some things to try and get out as quickly as possible, but uh, again, not that fast here. Eight drones on the way. Full on drone production as he sits with just a handful of links. Bare minimum number of links right now for Hero, of course. Doesn't want to build any more than he absolutely has to. Five zealots could move out and force him to build some more, but. Um, we'll see if Promise takes that risk. It is a bit of a risk. I would like to see him push out and at least force the links back. Um, kind of scare the Zerg player a little bit. You know, hey, you probably should build some more links, right, bud? Probably. No, just only drones? Okay, okay. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit much to allow Hero to get away with. Carapace on the way right now. But will he go Ogre Zerg? No third gas. Second gas is almost done. Which is an indicator. It's not a an absolute, but it is an indicator that maybe he wants to go uh, for that play. Uh, of course, as is the Carapace, but we'll see. Ooh, the micro. Some of that snow micro there. Oh, 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 oh. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh. Not able to pull that one off. Does lose. Oh, did I click the wrong thing there? Oops. Oh. Oh. Sick micro. I don't even know how you do that. I've only seen snow do that so far. But that is legendary. How the hell do you do that? If you guys know, let me know in the comments down below. Is that like patrol micro or something? Feels like something to do with patrol. But... Protoss players are leveling up, guys. Just like everybody in Brood War. They're getting there. They're figuring out new tricks every single day. It's kind of crazy. This game is still evolving. And we just don't know when it's going to stop. More and more Scourge being sent out here. Five mutas. The typical number. Two, sp two sunken colonies, of course. Exactly. As many as necessary. Drone... Uh, we need to actually pull the drones. Oh, okay. Drones get pulled pretty late here. A lot of them are going to go down. Um, Scourge are now available to fight, but... Oh. Okay, more Scourge are going to come up here. The Scourge are back here. What are they doing? Oh, we might get the surround on them. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good stuff. Corsairs. Not going to be able to pull that fancy micro here. Just going to run all the way back to... His cannons. I think quite a few drones went down during that. I imagine. Quite a, quite a bit of damage. You know, not an insane amount, but maybe like five. Five uh, to eight maximum, I think. Um, I'm going to have to look back at that later. Not 100%. Getting into our gateway production here. I like the base layouts from Promise. He's got a very nice um, aesthetic eye for base layout. He's got some nice feng shui going on in his base, I'll say. Triple sunken now. Ready for that follow-up Archon push. Lot of Scourge going in. That is a ton of Scourge, and he knows that the Archon is not here. Some Templar popping out. Right as the mutas fly in, the Scourge are going to connect on everything. But wait, a lot of those overkilled. A lot of the Scourge overkilled there on a few Corsairs. And he's not going to be able to get the kill. Um, Kind of an error, I guess, from Hero. I know it's really, really hard to split your Scourge properly and hit 
you know, not overkill with the course or with the scourge on Corsairs, but that was a little rough. You know, he came in, he dumped a huge amount of scourge with a lot. That was a lot of gas. Another round of uh, mutas comes out. Wow. A lot of those mutas went down too during that fight. Lost a bunch of the mutas. Mutas. Um, and all the scourge, but he's gonna try and do it again. That's wild to me. Um, maybe he could just come over here and snipe some Templar. He knows that there's not that many Corsairs now. And there's only one Archon. Can he get this? Oh, a big shot there. Uh, onto the Mutas. Oh, another good storm as well. But both the Corsairs do go down. A little bit of friendly fire there. Looking for the kill on the Templar. Not gonna get it. Oh, um, maybe he can use the... Oh. Oof, that's so scary. Look at all the mutas here. So low. Yikes. Cannot take another Archon shot here. He was trying to like skirt around and take some pot shots at the Archon, but it's not going to happen. Looks like the Templar that fused were super low. One HP? What? Were those Templar at one HP? They managed to survive? That is some kind of crazy shenanigans nonsense. If that's actually what happened, that is wild. I'm gonna come in and stop the, the cannons from coming up anyway. And he's gonna kind of force the hand here. Great dodge, really great dodge. Um, he's gonna force the hand a little bit from Promise. I guess Promise won't commit as Hydras are now out in full force. Uh, Dragoons are gonna be able to clear the, the Mutas. Usually Dragoons not the greatest against, against Mutas, but hey, if the Mutas are that badly softened up, like, it's not going to be that hard. Even three dragons can fight five mutas. Or seven mutas, excuse me. And so, the third base will be established. This is a good game already, hero. Having a bit of a tough time making Ogres or Gamer work against Promise, who... You know, he's got the micro with the Templar, or with the, um... Corsairs, and he's had some pretty good storms. In defense against the mutas, there's a lot of damage. That's a quite a lot of probe kills. Really lowering that probe count by a good bit here. 53 probes remaining to the 50 workers of Hero. But Hero on three base to promise his three base now. Not the greatest situation. Finally, Singularity Charge going to be finished. Does need that online here. Another cannon going to come up as well. Got some more defense over here and don't allow Hero to just keep abusing this position. Looks like he's coming back in to do it again. Yeah, he's just gonna get a bunch more kills here. So annoying. So many kills. Oh, it's brutal. Dropping him below his own work account. That is rough. Still no uh, overlord speed. It's funny, is this Shao Shui playing or what? Looks like he's uh, foregoing that overload speed for kind of a crazy amount of time. If we had DTs right now for Promise, he could deny a third ba a fourth base uh, almost forever. It's kind of crazy how long it takes an overlord to move um, between the two bases here and here and here. That just come from there to there. It is uh, kind of a wild amount of time. But he's not building any more Corsairs. And he's not resorting to DT and, and Dark Archon either, which is a bit surprising considering how many mutas we've seen out of Hero. He's not kind of directly countering either of those things. Instead, he's just going for a big old push over here towards the fourth. Great storm on high ground, catching some of those lurkers as they were moving. I'm only getting hits on one of them though. Oh, the Templar. Be careful. Where is the Observer? Do we have one? It's in production. Observer. I think we only have the one that's about to pop out. That's not good. Promise could just go and take his own fourth, though. Like, he doesn't have to try and attack in this. He is actually sending the probe, so he is going to go take his own fourth. It's a prudent maneuver. Prudent decision here. Defiler Mound on the way. Uh, I don't know how confident I would be feeling playing against Hero. Uh, on four base versus four base, but as a Protoss, it's it should be a winning 
position. It should be. Um, Ling's trying to come out. Needs to actually send some more reinforcements here to the center right if we want to keep that alive. Uh, the Midas are going to have, you know, long lived um, utility here. But meanwhile, base is going to be cracked. He's going to get in here. And the Scourge can't connect. Really good uh, observer control by Promise. Very good control out of him. And the Zealots are now going to come down. While the, uh, dra after the Dragoons have broken through the main horde of Lurkers and Zealots on the backside are just going to fight Lings. This is perfect. This is perfect for Promise. He's going to be able to have Zealots fight pure Ling down here on the low ground and a High Templar Dragoon fighting Hydra uh, and Lurker here on the high ground. Does he have enough though? Does he have enough? That is the question. He does kill the base. That's a big kill right there. Does he have a storm? No. Five seconds from having that storm. Lings with crack are starting to break his mother's back. Wait, oh, hold on. Storms come up. Great storms here. Really, really good storms. He doesn't get the second Archon, but dude, those were some amazing storms. Killing so many of those mutas. And he, Promise actually holds. He holds through all of that, all of that craziness. He manages to keep this, the control over this high ground. He prevents another base from coming down. Another couple of good storms here. Zealots are going to come out to fight this and Archons will be made. He can bring his army together to deal with that. And uh, Hero's starting to run out of options. Um, it's not, not, uh, not looking too hot right now. He's going to try and take the top right. But Promise is in a commanding position. He could potentially take this base. He could take this base. He can do a lot of different things right now, actually. He's got a lot of options open to him. Breaking, running right down into this. I don't know if this is the right decision. This feels uh, a little bit crazy. Uh, Promise also getting caught with some of his reinforcements coming out onto the map. He's gonna drop some storms and then try to back away. Meanwhile, breaking into this base. Can he do it right here? He's getting close. He's getting very close to breaking through this. Is If he can just kill some of these hatcheries, maybe that's enough. As long as he holds over here on the bridges, uh, that could be fine. Oh, coming around the backside here. Crazy. Hero, gonna try and sandwich this army, but does he have enough bread for the top part of the bun? Can he actually get over here and, you know, Close in on this side. Oh my god, the storms! Holy crap! The storm just absolutely annihilating there. And there's not enough bread. Like I said, on the top part of this Protoss sandwich. He's gonna go ahead. And, uh... Well, I guess clean up the army now. But zealots are coming through and there's just not much remaining. Got like two lurkers here. The Sunkins are still a threat, but uh, the Lurkers get dove upon, and I think Promise has done it. He's just finishing off the last few remaining units. The su Sunken Colonies are heroes here, bleeding all over the place. They are going to finally go down, though. And the Zealots overwhelming just rallies and rallies and rallies coming across the map. Dropping below 100 supply, 74. Now is Hero hanging on but gg is called hero taps out and promise gets one final victory hey not bad out of promise man what a godlike player in the very first game versus calm in this game versus hero i gotta say i am incredibly impressed with him you know we saw some skin get shown there we saw some uh some of the belly get shown from promise in the the second game uh versus calm and the first game versus hero just kind of getting overwhelmed by the late game macro uh, of these really really strong zerg players but his scrappy mid game is something to be contended with and he's shown some observer control 
that rivals a lot of the best Protoss players in the world. It is so hard uh, as a Protoss, hard in air quotes, I'll say, uh, to push up a ramp and keep your observer back. Um, just out of range so that Hydras can't snipe it. Because remember, he just built his first observer as he was pushing out. So if he had lost that observer, he doesn't break that ramp. And he lost this base here. So he would have been in a horrible position because Hero could have continuously reinforced that position and kept denying this and eventually come around, wrapped around with the next time, like the second or third observer that tries to come up and clear this ramp when he tries to get up here. Then the big army of Hero comes around the back and like crushes this force. So he was really, really important that he kept those observers alive and then he broke that position. He did. He manages to take out one of the best Zerg players in the entire world right now with some fantastic Protoss play. But guys, that is it for this series. I hope you enjoyed it. Promise versus two great Zerg players. I'll see you guys in the next video.